First of all, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and um, I'm really happy because um, I'm going to share for the first time in Romania some discoveries, which um, I, I really think that they, could, they might rewrite um, very old history. So a few words about me. Um, I was born in Bucharest, and then I moved to the US when I was 14. And um, then I, since I was a kid, I really loved um, Eliade's history of religion, and I've been fascinated with human origins, and like the Egyptians. And um, then I got into reading like very old cultures. And um, I was fascinated. Um, I became fascinated with like Homo erectus and like very old human species. And um, that got me on a journey uh, of returning to Romania and uh, producing a documentary called The Mystery of the Carpathian Sphinx. Um, huge dream of mine came true. Um, I brought um, a geologist from Boston University who's world renowned um, to inspect some areas um, um, in Bucej Massif. And um, so first I want to ask you, what do you think about the Neanderthals? You know, how do you think a Neanderthal look like? <laughs> um, you know, he was a half brute, half ape, like that, or maybe not? You know, I um, want to present to you how they actually looked like. They looked like this, <laughs> which might surprise a few people in this audience. Um, I was, I was certainly surprised when, when I found out about it, you know, like um, 10 years ago. And, um, you know, Neanderthals had green eyes, light skin, and, and red hair, as this shows. And um, they also had freckles, and um, they lived in the Carpathian Mountains in Romania. Um, a lot of them were found. And um, this, um, this reconstruction was made by uh, Victor Dac, who is um, um, one of the most famous Palo artists in the world. And he works with um, like anthropologists and archaeologists um, to actually make um, reproduction based on, 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 on real Neanderthal skulls. And um, I got this from him a few, a few weeks ago. And it's, it's a new reconstruction. And now we're talking about making some reconstructions of Neanderthal from Romania. Um, and um, I want to present to you This is how a Neanderthal sounded like, <laughs> if you can believe that. <laughs> um, I was actually really moved. Like the first time I heard something like that, I, I thought it's incredible. I thought, oh my God, like this is somebody from, you know, like a hundred thousand years ago, you know, the voice of somebody from a hundred years ago. And um, this sound was actually um, based off real reconstruction from their vocal tracks that was made by a composer from, from the UK. But it was based off a book called The Singing Neanderthals. And uh, um, that book showed that Neanderthals were a highly musical species. They were incredible singers. They were actually the most incredible singers um, that ever lived on Earth, um, if you can believe that. Um, and um, they were highly emotional. And they were these extraordinary dancers and performers, and they did all these ceremonies. And I thought, wow, this is like really amazing stuff that I don't know anything about. And I want to know more. And I was very interested because the Neanderthals lived in the Carpathian Mountains in, in Romania. 
and they were in Bucej Massif, and they were in many places. So I said, isn't this something really interesting that I want to get into and know more about? And um, it's also known that they were ritualistic. And in the Carpathian Mountains in Romania, there is amazing evidence. It's like some of the best evidence in the world of the rituals. And Christian Lasco was here last year. He, he discovered an amazing arrangement the, um, that they made of caber skulls. And I will, I will show you that a bit, a bit later. And also the, um, in Romania, there is this evidence of like the oldest ochre containers in the world that I, I hold like a few weeks ago. I was talking to this archeologist who, who found, um, who found this, they're very small. And I said, isn't this amazing? Like I'm holding something from 100,000 years ago in my hand that somebody made, like of my cousin from 100,000 years ago. And, um, and these are the oldest red ochre containers in, in the world, and they, they come from from Romania. So I think that's quite something really worth knowing about. Um, and the, the arrangement that Christian Lasco, Christian Lasco found uh, in 1987, it's, um, it's a cross formation, sort of looks like a cross formation made of caber skulls that Neanderthals made almost 100,000 years ago. And um, when I first saw this, I thought, wow, you know, like the Christian venerations, you know, it's a Christian veneration symbol, this cross, and um, the Neanderthals knew this like 100,000 years ago. And nothing like this has been found anywhere else in Europe. Um, so it's really unique discoveries that are coming from Romania. And... Um, because of these discoveries and more, but you know, these are the ones that I really like, felt like very moved by. Um, I decided that I want to know more than the Neanderthals who lived in, in in Romania, and so I needed an, an expert to come with me and uh, and investigate and, and 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 looked in some places where they were found. Um, and I've always been interested in the Bucej Mountains and like the Carpathian Sphinx. It's always been like a fascinating fascination of mine. So um, I found living in Boston this world-renowned geologist who's an expert on ancient stone, and um, um, he's, he's famous for dating the Egyptian Sphinx in, in Egypt, um, proving that the Egyptian Sphinx was tens of thousands of years before the rise of Egyptian culture. Um, so what I was interested to do was to bring somebody with an open mind to see if we can find some, some evidence of like Neanderthal rituals or Neanderthal ceremonies and like where would they would perform them, you know, like maybe some physical evidence. Um, so what, what I did, I, I brought uh, Robert Schock to Romania in 2010, and we went on the Bucej Mountains to look for physical, physical evidence of their Neanderthal presence. And we went to the Carpathian Sphinx. We went around it um, at different times for a few weeks, and we went to caves, and we went to many places. And um, we didn't find any, any physical evidence, and I was a bit... You know, I, I, I wish there was something, you know, that's not only in caves, that's, a, that's, um, uh, that's found on the surface. And so, walking one, one evening around the Sphinx, we saw another profile emerging. And I said, wow, I mean, this profile looks like a Neanderthal. And um, and I want this is the um, the profile. Um, 
And Robert had a very interesting reaction, reaction to this. I find this absolutely amazing. Yes. Everyone looks at one side of the Sphinx and sees a face there, looks like a modern face. But if we walk around to the other side, look what we have. This is a face. We have an anthropoid looking face. Exactly. But it looks like a Neanderthal. Very a Neanderthal much face with a big eye socket, low forehead. The, you can see the mouth and the nose here. And notice, and I think this is very telling, very important, the way it's facing. This face is looking toward the west. And we're here in the evening, Buddha. the sun is setting. Exactly. Look how the sun is lined up. Direct line to the eye. Direct line to the eye. This Neanderthal type face is looking toward the west, looking toward the setting sun. Now it's been speculated that Neanderthals were a more nocturnal species. If that's the case, what sun would they be interested in? The setting sun, the sun that sets as they come out for their nocturnal for their activities, ceremonies their ceremonies, their rituals. So they would not be looking toward the east as many modern cultures do, but toward the west the setting sun, which would be significant and important to them because essentially that would start their day, that would start their ceremonies. And we, here we have a Neanderthal-like face looking toward the setting sun. So um, we saw this and then um, we went in other areas because we thought, okay, there might be high potential to, fi to find some, ev some physical evidence. Um, and one evening, we were by ba we stayed by Babele, and um, we were just talking about Neanderthals. We were just talking about um, if they were here on the plateau, where they could be performing their rituals and things like that. And um, just standing on a flat surface on on a on a huge platform, um, Robert saw these two depressions, these two holes, and um, to me they didn't look like anything. They were just these two, <laughs> two spots on a rock. Okay, what's that? But to him, he said, oh my God, this is what we're looking for. This is the, the evidence. And one was this, this like depression where water collects, and another one looked like a sort of like a scratched area. And, um, and Robert said, okay, these two spots started as natural depressions, but they're not completely natural. And so it means that in order for, to have these the way they are now, you need tens of thousands of people to come in this area for thousands of years. So I thought that was really quite incredible that we just stumbled by, by luck, let's say, in, in this area which really, really showed that Neanderthals were, were there, close to the Carpathian Sphinx. And um, Robert made um, very interesting statement, I thought, um, that um, there is no doubt that Puchej Mountains were a cultural and spiritual and religious nucleus for Neanderthals during the last Ice Age. Um, so, I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, this was the evidence that I was, that we were looking for, but we didn't know we can we can just find it like like that, and um, I will show you now the spots that I'm talking about and his conclusion. And I mean that is deep, and I'm not really touching the end. Yeah, it's quite it's deep. Sediments. That yeah, it's just sediment that's collected in modern times. Well, what I think we have here is really a depression or basin area that would have been perfect for ritualistic purposes, for different ceremonial purposes. To me, this is very similar. This is not exactly a basin, um, 
possibly it was at one point if this is eroded back in more recent times you can see there's some breakage there but what it looks like is an area that you can eroded out you can put it's your hand in because i really <laughs> I, I really can't. I'm not reaching the end. No, it goes yeah, way back. Probably up to... At least back to there. So this entire complex, which in many ways is symbolized by the Carpathian Sphinx, is a huge religious, ceremonial, ritualistic complex that must have been incredibly important to the Neanderthal people for generations and generations, probably thousands and thousands of generations over tens of thousands of years. To judge a culture like the Neanderthals by the scanty remains, physical remains, it's, it's sort of insane. Really important to me to be able to come here and experience firsthand the caves, to experience firsthand the plateau, to experience firsthand the Carpathian Sphinx. To me, in fact, in some ways, we can think of the Carpathian Sphinx as being a symbol for a lost world, literally a lost people, a lost culture. Um, so really, Robert's conclusion was that the Carpathian Sphinx was probably the, ne the altar of the Neanderthals and that the Buchej Mountains was one of the most important locations in Europe, if not the most important locations for them to gather. So I think these are really exciting discoveries that are just, have been made. And so much more can be found in the next years. And um, we are continuing this um, experiment to, to see where, where, what else, what, what are it, other evidence we can find about where they were and they were, where they performed rituals and what their culture was. So I think it's time to really get to know the Neanderthals better because these were people who were really striking and they had an amazing culture that lasted over 100,000 years. And we still carry their genes today, you know. The ones of you in this audience who have light skin and green eyes and red hair have Neanderthal genes. <laughs> so I think it's, it's relevant that, um, that we're doing this, you know. I think it could enhance our lives if we know more about them and their culture and the fact that they were in Buchej Mountains by the Carpathian Sphinx. I think it's a story really worth talking about. And, uh, and know, knowing more of. So I really think it's time that we should rewrite our old history. Thank you. Thank you.